Hello. In this video, I'll be talking about waivers, uh, what are the qualifications, and if someone is actually um, found inadmissible, uh, and we are going to be talking about whether or not they are qualified to apply for a waiver. And I just want to take this opportunity to wish everybody a happy holiday seasons. While some of you guys don't uh, do not celebrate Christmas, well, don't be offended, but I just want to wish those who celebrate Christmas a Merry Christmas. If you do not celebrate Christmas, that's fine with me because really I'm working. <laughs> There's no celebration here. And I uh, just want to wish other people happy holidays. Okay, thank you for riding with me for this entire year. It has been tough with those immigration bills. But again, what can we do? We are uh, hopeful for the future as we enter the year ahead 2022 well i just want to wish you uh, a happy holiday seasons uh from me to your family and to your friends okay so let's go into it um for those who do not know me my name is Bijou Gwanda. i'm an immigration lawyer here in dc um i am born <laughs> in kentucky and of course in the district of columbia i work with uh immigration people around the world and across the country and including the district of columbia as you can see this is a different setup because i'm actually um uh, in a different home uh today i am actually uh at the lobby uh basically uh where i live so i decided to take um, a different approach and hopefully the lightning is fine <laughs> so let's talk about waivers right I'm going to show you a flow chart of waivers and i'm going to show you the requirements for waivers and we're going to discuss a little bit a uh, couple examples i hope to be brief and straight to the point uh let me get right into it share my screen bear with me here sharing my screen okay so this is uh, a filing uh, a short right for the waiver filing certain waivers of inadmissibility so if you are abroad for example uh you have to file uh, a waiver right you file a waiver for um inadmissibility if you have you have been found yourself inadmissible right what does it say if you are abroad and and the u.s consular officer has determined that you are in an ineligible for an immigrant visa or non-immigrant visa, K or V visa, because you are inadmissible to the United States, then you may be able to file an application for a waiver of inadmissibility, okay? And if you have been removed from the United States and need permission to reapply in addition to a waiver of inadmissibility, you might be able to seek permission to reapply for entry into the United States at the same time uh, with your request for waiver okay then you file 601 and uh, i-212 application for permission to to reapply for admission those of the people who have been uh, previously removed uh now they want to re-enter then they have found themselves inadmissible based on the removal right because they were deported now they want to re-enter then they're gonna have to file two type of waivers right i-601 and i-212 Okay, and then it, it gives you the filing and adju adjudicating process here on the back, on the end. So pretty much you go there, you file, consular officer has determined that you're in, a, in, uh, in inadmissible, then you find you file form six, I-61, I-212, and then they adjudicate, they give you the decision. If the decision is denied, then you file the uh, I-290B. Um, motion to reopen or to reconsider so basically this is the filing process pretty straightforward right we hope it's straightforward and then it gives you where to file and exceptions uh, if you don't you do not uh, qualify so you have to go to the website to find more so and then here if you go to this uh page here it talks about waiver eligibility and evidence first of all in order to determine eligibility of waiver what what are the grounds right first of all a waiver is available for the inadmissibility ground we have talked about it 
in the previous video, what are the inadmissibility grounds? We talk at least about eight of them. Health, public charge, criminal offenses, fraud, misrepresentation, or falsely claiming your citizenship, um, entry without inspections, and so forth. And some grounds of inadmissibility do not waive do not have waiver they cannot be waived just because uh, that's just how the law is right but some of them uh you can apply for a waiver first you have to find what type of inadmissibility issue you have then you have to meet statutory requirement and then a favorable exercise of discretion is warranted if you meet statutory requirement let me give you an example for example let's say you have been here unlawfully present, right? And then maybe for three, um, six uh, months, uh, more than six months and less than one year, and you found yourself outside of the US, now you want to apply to come back. What is gonna happen first, permission to reapply. Second, um, a waiver of inadmissibility. And Meeting statutory requirement in that sense is that you have been there at least for three years. Now you have met the statutory requirement because the bar says you have to stay there outside for three years. That's what statutory requirement means when it comes in that context. Okay. And another statutory requirement is that you have qualifying relative, uh, parent, child, or spouse of a U.S. citizen or permanent resident. At that point, you meet again another statutory requirement, and then you apply, right? Waiver and consent to apply. An applicant who files a waiver application may also be inadmissible because of prior removal or unlawful reentry. That's those are for the people who filed the form I-212. Prior removal, unlawful reentry. First of all, they remove somebody, and then the, the person attempted to reenter unlawfully. And now they remove them again. So now they want to. Uh, they have to ask for permission to reapply. That's when it comes to two form I two twelve and the six o one, the ground of inadmissibility. Those are very difficult concepts. So I'm trying to make it uh, as um, as understandable as I can. And then you have to show evidences, family relationship, medical or other issue require special specialized knowledge those are the evidences that you have to show i'm going to stop sharing here i'll go back so to summarize it waivers are available for certain ground of inad inadmissibility so if you have found yourself inadmissible the first question you have to ask yourself is on what ground let's say it's public charge okay if it's public charge Maybe because they say, well, you're more likely to become a, uh, more likely to rely on government. That's public charge, right? So now you have to bring a waiver and a sponsor, right? And show that you have a sponsor who is willing to sponsor you to show that you have met a uh, statutory requirement on poverty guidelines and then waive that public charge uh, ground of inadmissibility. That's just an example, right? When it comes to public charge, let's say when it comes to um, a certain ground of inadmissibility, you can show extreme hardship, right? On your spouse, uh, children, and um, parents, okay? Of a US citizen or of a permanent resident. That's how waivers work. So if you feel like the Queen Court has been denied or your admission to the US, if you're outside of the US, or you've been denied a visa based on inadmissibility issue, please do not hesitate, call my office, okay? Call next week. Well, you can email me if you want, but it's better to call next week. That's when we'll call, uh, go back to work in terms of um, answering those phone calls. 202-751-2180, consultation fees apply. Um, then we can assess your case and determine whether a waiver in your particular case really is warranted, right? So that's what we can do for you. That's it for today. Uh, nothing else to say. 
Uh, if you have questions and you're willing to consult, please email, call, or consultation fees apply, or, or else just comment below. We'll get to those questions when we get to them. I hope the lightning is good. I hope you can hear me. This is a different setting. I just wanted to try it out. Maybe sometimes I'll be coming here to make uh, more videos, okay? This is Bijun Gwanda here, immigration lawyer here in D.C. Until next time, bye-bye.